Hi everyone, this is Hexagram and you are watching my very first video on the subject of sim racing. So yeah, this is the first time I'm trying to do something like this, but I felt like doing it for quite a while now, so here goes. As you can probably tell, English is not my first language, so please bear with me. Nothing more delightful than spoken English with a bit of the old Danish accent, right? Well, that's how it is, so yeah, bear with me. This first video will not have a specific focus as such. I'm just talking a bit in general about myself, or what kind of a guy I am, and then of course my relations to sim racing. I guess future videos will be a bit more focused on uh, specific subjects and stuff, but uh, this is my first time out, so it'll just be pretty, pretty general stuff, I guess. And in the background you'll see me racing R-Factor 2 in an offline race versus the AI. I'm rating the magnificent Formula Renault 3.5 2014 spec, and it's, uh, in my opinion, one of the most awesome mods for our Factor 2. The car just feels absolutely like I always imagined it would feel like. So much fun to drive. It was, uh, as you probably know, released by ISI not too long ago, a couple of weeks, I guess, and I've been at it ever since. It's, uh, it's a huge improvement over the previous car, the, the 2010 spec, I guess it was, the old Formula Renault. Uh, that previous car was plenty fun to drive too, uh, but uh, it was plenty crazy too, that's for sure. Just getting the power down sometimes, you know, it was like threading a needle at the best of times. So let's just say I've had plenty of spins, plenty of offs in that car, no doubt about that. And it, uh, it took me quite a, a, quite a bit of fiddling and testing uh, various uh, force feedback settings to get to the point where I actually felt comfortable in that old car, traction-wise. The high speed was never a problem, but um, getting the traction out of the slow corners would, was actually quite a bit of a nightmare. Um, so this new uh, 2014 spec car is very different in that regard as I can feel everything in the low speed corners um, and I then know how to react to it. It's very clear to me as soon as I've uh, overstepped the limits of adhesion and I can correct myself in an instant because uh, the force feedback tells me exactly what's going on. It's very exciting stuff actually and it has taught me uh, so much about how to handle hairpins and other slow corners. I've gained a whole bunch of time overall in any car on any track because of this one car. So, uh, so good job ISI, that's what I say, yeah. So um, I'll just come right out and say it, uh, that R Factor 2 is my uh, number one racing sim and uh, I figure it will stay like that for a long time to come. I'm hoping to do a bunch of these videos over time and I'll uh, take a look at various other sims out there, uh, Assetto Corsa, iRacing, Project Cars, GameStock Car and so on. Uh, and I'll probably also take a look at some of the older sims too, like GTR2 that recently grabbed my attention, um, R Factor 1, etc. But yeah, R Factor 2 really hits the spot for me, racing sim wise. You know, um, I can't get that pure, raw feeling of actually racing a car anywhere else than in R Factor 2. The physics are outstanding, the force feedback is miles ahead of anything else out there. The AI in offline racing actually poses a very real challenge when you remove the AI limiter and crank up the strength and aggression levels. It's just, it's mind blowing actually. Really tense, exciting, challenging stuff for sure. And concerning content, R Factor 2 has come a long way too, that's for sure. Uh, it's actually quite a big package when you look at it now. And you have all the historic stuff with the Houstons and the Formula 3s, 2s, the Formula 1s. And you can go crazy at places like historic uh, Monza, Monaco, and uh, not least the, the daunting 1960s Spa. Uh, I tell you man, that version of Spa is the most scary track I've ever raced in any racing sim, ever. <laughs> and those old, overpowered, slidey Formula 1 cars, it's one hell of a ride, that's for sure. Everywhere you look man, it's like death is staring you in the face. 
death and uh, loads of cattle too. Yeah. Uh, every time I approach the, the Master Kink, uh, it's a really, really gnarly near full speed chicane halfway around the circuit. I mean, I can't help but get the chills thinking about Jackie Stewart's uh, 1966 near fatal crash when he ended upside down, soaked in fuel, and he had a smash, smashed rib cage, and it's just, God, it's too much, man. And, and the straight up horror of that old 1972 24 hour race where a marshal was struck in the Master Kink and drivers had to take avoiding action because uh, body parts littered the track. It's like, you know, that, that old spa is just straight up evil. It's like, it's like, it's like it's another universe, man. It's just straight up evil. So yeah, exciting stuff. Um, yeah, and I, I can say our effect, uh, you know, content-wise, it, it has the, it had loads of different cars. Loads of different cars. You have the Formula Renault that I've already mentioned. Uh, you have the Honda Civic, the Marussia Formula One car, the Nissan, Nissan GTR, the Corvette C6R, the Camaro, um, the Skip Barber, the Formula 2, DW12 IndyCar, and so much more than that. The list just goes on. Many different cars. You have uh, 13 tracks in various layouts. And you have uh, Silverstone, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and the road course, uh, Sepang, Estoril, Palm Beach, a couple of uh, fantasy tracks. So yeah, quite a big package nowadays. So um, yeah, where I'm getting at is that Artifact 2 is getting closer to feeling like a full package these days, I feel. Uh, all from cars to road cars to touring cars to GT cars to formula cars. It's such a broad variety of vehicles and quite a broad set of tracks. And this is where this is why I'm also very pleased with this sim as it is right now. And of course, uh, the development is nowhere near finished yet. So, lots of good things to come, I'm sure. And I'm not usually the kind of guy who loves to go on and on about myself but I'll just try and give you a little bit of background what I do and how I got into sim racing so yeah, I'm 27 years old I live in Denmark um, besides sim racing, I live and breathe for, for music I am a songwriter have been since 2010, uh, 2007 sorry. Uh, and I go by the depressing name of I Divorced Life the music is like a combination of many things. It's kind of hard for me to stick a label on it and define it. So if I say rock, electronic stuff, lo-fi, a little cinematic, catchy melodies, ferocious distorted beats, it's a bit of schizophrenic vocals and some pretty dark lyrics, well, you'll have a pretty much an idea of what I Divorced Life is. You'll just have to go and listen to it for yourself. It's not for everyone, that's for sure. Everyone can listen to it. Of course, it's out there. You can download it and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of yeah, it's a little strange. But uh, it provides me with a, a much needed emotional and creative outlet. So that stuff is uh, pretty important to me. But you didn't click this video to hear about some guys depressing music. Uh, so I'll be returning to the subject at hand and uh, and how I got into sim racing. And I actually only got into sim racing just last summer. So about a year ago. Uh, and after having saved and saved and saved money for a high-end PC to make uh, music on, I suddenly realized that I could use it to sim race as well. And this just opened a whole can of worms. I got myself a great PC, a G27 wheel and pedals, and I bought uh, R Factor 2 and iRacing. And uh, later on, I went on to buy most of the other sims out there that are uh, worthwhile. I then spent all of last summer trying to get up to speed uh, with this new passion. I've uh, played uh, plenty of racing games before, but only with, uh, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? A controller, console controller type thing, using my fingers to steer and... Uh, not real optimal stuff there, but uh, yeah. So uh, it wasn't easy getting used to racing with the wheel and uh, racing uh, proper realistic uh, sims. But uh, that was of course half the fun. 
and uh, yeah, I just had enough of all those weak console racing titles uh, with the weak physics and the weak AI and just yeah, shallow, pointless stuff. Real frustrating for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Codemasters, Polyphony, I am talking to you. You make shallow, useless racing games, at least for me. So yeah, I just had enough. And I needed to get as close to real racing as I possibly could get. Um, racing has been a passion of mine ever since I got uh, the F1 World Grand Prix for the Nintendo 64 in like 1998 or something. And that was the game that actually got me into watching Formula One as well. And the passion has just grown ever since. I guess I'll do a video on the various old racing games I used to play. Maybe bring back some nice old memories for some of you. And let me just round off by saying that, um, yeah, every sim racer out there should know and should realize that uh, this is probably the best time ever to be a sim racer. Uh, never before has there been so many great titles to choose from, and uh, things just keep evolving and keep getting better. And there's so much reason to be very excited, I think, with all those early access uh, type of sims where you just see new content and new features and refined physics and refined force feedback. Everything is just evolving and just keep getting better and better. So, yeah, I'm really excited. And you should be too. So, that's it for now. And I hope you enjoyed this video for what it was. A bit out of focus, but uh, yeah, I, I, I felt I had to, to start somewhere. So, I hope some of you can enjoy it. <laughs> and uh, I hope you'll, you'll tune in again next time. So yeah, bye.